So this is a very heartwarming story about the metal you have in your hand. I was also in Texas because that's where the headquarters of our community are located. I belong to the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. So while I was in Texas there, I received a call and I was asked by a wonderful parishioner who was very, very concerned if I could go and do an exorcism of a public junior high school. And she explained to me the situation and it was very, very, very bad. It was a junior high school in Texas. I can't tell you like what city or what district because I think I may have broken the law. And that is because I went and I combined church and state that night. <laughs> and I went there with my team to do an exorcism of a junior high school. They asked me, please, Father, they had so many problems. It was drug abuse, it was violence, um, it was poverty, and it all came to a head the week before when one of the students at that junior high school, I think he was 14, he committed suicide by hanging himself by the neck outside the front entrance to the school. And you talk about a horror and a tragedy. And you know how the government is. They tried to fix the problems before, but here's what our government thinks. They throw money right at problems. They throw more money, more money, and more money, but that doesn't cut it. We actually, if truth be told, we need God in the schools. <laughs> and by the way, not every government is like our government. I work all over the world. I've been in other countries where they, they asked me, the government asked me to go to the schools. The separation of church and state is a fraud. It's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration. I know because my dad was a lawyer and a judge. It's not in either one. It's not part of the law. It's a fraud. It was written in a private letter. You knew that, right? I think it was Thomas Jefferson who wrote a private letter. Many countries around the world, many countries, ask the priest to go, even to bless the government buildings. I blessed the government offices of the Prime Minister of Belize late one night. And guess what? The scent of roses came into the whole government office building for the next eight hours. The scent of roses. Amen. Amen. So our country needs to be redone and reborn. Amen? Amen. We need to become a Catholic nation. Amen. Let's say one Hail Mary right now that we become a truly Catholic nation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Well, beloved, I asked my team, the particular lady who asked me, could I go and do an exorcism of this junior high school? I said, well, we need to ask the principal for his permission. So I asked my team, what is his name? And they told me, I'll just make up a name. They said, well, his name is Mr. Gonzalez. I said, oh, good, he's probably Catholic, go ask him because almost all the Hispanics are Catholic. So they said, Gonzalez, I said, oh yes, ask him today. He sent me back a message, Father, I would be honored and I beg you to come. I sent him back a message, we will come tomorrow night. Don't tell anyone, I told him. We will come at night when the sun sets, when everybody is gone. We're gonna do an exorcism of your school and we're going to plant the St. Benedict medal around your school. He was so grateful and we met him the next evening it was about six or seven in the evening. Everybody was gone, just the principal and my team. So I started the prayer in his office and did an exorcism in the office, one written by Pope Leo XIII. We did an exorcism there, and this always happens when we do an exorcism of a building, something falls from the wall down to the ground. Every single time, like one of those stations of the cross with a purple rope around it, boom, hits the ground. It's almost like the devil, like an angry adolescent, slams something as he leaves out the door, you see? But he has to go anyway, you see? You like pouting, you might say. It happens every time. It happened there. So well, don't be afraid. Don't be, I need to go on his way out. What that means? Don't be afraid. So we finished the exorcism of the office. It took about 30 minutes. So now, Mr. Principal, we're going to plant the medal around your school. It's a giant school, 2,000 students. Giant. So we proceeded for the next two and a half hours at night. About every 20 yards, we stopped. We made a hole in the ground. We put a St. Benedict medal in the hole. We covered it up and said a Hail Mary all the way around the entire school. By then, it was about 10, 10.30 at night. We finally got done with everything. I said, Mr. Principal, we're just getting started. We'll be back tomorrow night. So we met him the second night. Again, when everybody was gone, the sun was going down, and we planted the medals now on the inside of the school around each building itself, every single building in this huge school. When we got done with that. I said, Mr. Principal, we'll be back tomorrow night. We came back a third night. We, we prayed in every classroom in the school. There were a lot of them. We said one decade of the rosary in every classroom, and we hid the St. Benedict medal in every classroom. 
Then we finally were done. And we said goodbye. That school, beloved, was known as the worst, the most dangerous, and the most violent school in the school district. For 50 years, they had ranked number 60 out of 60 schools. And there in Texas at that time, they had two ratings, two markings for every school. One was academic, the other was called it social. So they measured every junior high school by academic progress and by social skills. Do they get along, you see? Are they polite? That school had been the last, number 60, for 50 years in a row. We did that blessing around September of the school year. Let me ask you to take a guess where that school was rated at the end of that school year. It was number one in academics and in social skills, number one in the whole district. And nobody knows how it happened, <laughs> except the principal, me and my team. Amen? Amen. Is that awesome? Yes. That is awesome. Amen. That's what you have in your hand is that metal. It is a nuclear reactor, that metal. So wear it, put it in your car, give it to a loved one. And remember the old Catholic tradition, the old tradition, to plant them around your houses. It's the old Catholic tradition. You should do this, beloved. They're not very expensive, especially if you buy them by the bag. Have Father bless them for you with a special blessing. I'll leave him a copy of it. Have Father bless it for you. And plant at least four around the four corners of your property. 